In this video, we're going to define the scattering cross section, which is that parameter or the parameter that we're ultimately interested in estimating in a typical scattering experiment. The reason for that is because this parameter will help us quantify the number of particles per unit time, which we'll denote by dn over dt, that arrive at a range of detectors that are far from the target due to some interaction potential between the target uh, molecules and the incident particles. So to illustrate what that means, uh, we'll take a coordinate system where the z-axis is in that direction. And to make this a right-handed coordinate system, we'll have x pointing up and y coming out of the page. We then have uh, a flux of incident particles, which I'll denote by Ji, that will eventually hit some target, which we're modeling with a potential V of R. And so it's Ji, this is flux of incident particles. This is the number of particles traversing uh, a surface. So if you have an imaginary surface here, we're measuring the number of particles that pass that surface per unit time. We then have our uh, detectors that we're depicting by the sphere. And what we're interested in is uh, the scatter particles will, for example, scatter to some area, uh, vector area dA. This area is uh, subtended by a quantity known as the solid angle, which is typically denoted by d omega. So what you should imagine is that we have a detector in this area. Detectors have a finite size, which we're denoting by dA. And we want to know how many particles or the, uh, the detection frequency of particles by this detector that's over here. If this detector is at some distance r from the target, then one way of defining the solid angle is that r's, this distance squared times the solid angle gives you the size of uh, this area element. This is typically written in spherical coordinates as sine theta, d theta, d phi. It's the infinitesimal solid angle. Uh, so here to get an orientation for this, uh, if we have some direction like this, the we're denoting by theta, the azimuthal angle. So the angle in spherical coordinates with respect to the z-axis. And the polar angle, phi, is the angle in the xy plane relative to the x-axis. So it's getting a bit crowded, but this angle over here, at which the particles are scattering, we can denote that by uh, the pair of angles theta and phi. This tells us the direction in which the particles are scattering. And what we can deduce from this situation is that uh, the number of particles per unit time that arrive at a detector over here, that's going to be proportional to the flux of incident particles. The more particles you have uh, incident on the target, the more particles you expect uh, on this area. And it's also proportional to the solid angle. So the larger an area that you're looking at, the more 
or the larger the detection frequency that you would expect. The proportionality constant between these two quantities, that's what we denote by uh, delta sigma of theta and phi times the flux of incident particles and the solid angle. So this quantity is called the differential scattering section. The word differential is a bit misleading because this isn't a differential, which is why I'm not using the letter D, but it is a, a fractional part of a larger quantity, which will be the scattering cross section. And that's why I use the symbol uh, delta. It's in general a function of theta and phi. And the interpretation of this is that uh, the differential scattering section is the area that captures the same amount of uh, the flux that this detector will capture. Right. So another way of, of writing this that will help us interpret what this differential scattering cross section is, is to isolate it like so. So all I've done here is isolate this quantity in this equation. And what this is, is the number of scattered particles per unit time. That's this quantity here per solid angle which is this one over d omega. Over the flux of incident particles. Okay, so this is uh, one way that you can uh, kind of define this differential scattering section. The generalization of this quantity is known as the total scattering section. This one will denote by sigma of theta and phi. And this is the result of adding up all of the individual contributions of this differential scattering section over all uh, solid angles. We can also write this more explicitly. If we're integrating over all solid angles, we're integrating over the entire range of the azimuthal and polar angles. We're ultimately going to be interested in being able to estimate this total scattering section as that will uh, tell us something about how the particles are being scattered by uh, a given target. In the next video, we'll begin looking at this problem through the lens of quantum mechanics by building up the idea of stationary scattering states. So these are quantum mechanical states that are uh, eigenstates of the Hamiltonian that is describing the scattering process.